Hi, my name is Pralia Campbell. It is Saturday, May 9th, 2020, and I am here with my two cousins, Zeporia Smith and Darrenice Moulton. And I will be asking them a few questions about their experience throughout COVID-19. So how are you guys doing today? I'm doing fine, you know, hanging in there. Um, I'm well. How are you, Pralia? I'm all right. Thank you for asking. So how old are you all? I am 26 years old. I'm 21. And growing up in Chicago, did you ever feel like something like this would happen along down the road? Not at all. Um, I was actually born and raised on the west side of Chicago. And I don't remember even dreaming about something like this. It's just so scary. So no, not at all. I mean, I, I didn't think that anything like this would happen. But I do remember when... um the swine flu first came out my elementary school was the first school to have it in Chicago I do remember that but we just had to leave the school for a couple days and we came right back oh what was the name of your elementary school I never it, it was uh Joyce Kilmer elementary school it's um it's on the north side of Chicago and it was the first uh, school in Chicago with the swine flu oh wow I'm sorry to hear that <clears throat> and so my first question for you all is, how has the 2019 through 2020 coronavirus pandemic affected you during this time? Um, it affected me a lot. Um, it's, it's just scary, you know. Um, you can't really do your normal day-to-day -day activities and your routines. It's, it's all changed, and I'm still trying to get adjusted to it. It just affected a lot, and... Um, you know, these procedures and precautions that, you know, is being implemented is it's just it's 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 beyond my 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 mind. So it just it's something that I'm just still getting used to. Yeah, um Pali, can you repeat the question one more time? I said how has the twenty nineteen through twenty twenty coronavirus pandemic affected you during this time? Okay, well, um it's affected me because I mean you know the mass and a lot of things are shut down like um the gyms my school um i mean in grocery stores you have to wait in line it's limited people like entered in buildings so it's a lot of things that's changed and it's affected me yeah i'm i'm, I'm sorry to hear that I, I, it's affecting everyone and this, you know, I think we all be grateful when this is all just over. <clears throat> yes, yes. And has it also affected your workspace, your job space, your day-to-day -day activities, the things that you would normally do? How is that? How is that going for you? Um, I'll, I'll take this one. So, yeah, it's it's affected my job and my school life. Uh, well, on the job. I'm a tutor for CPS and so the kids are out of school and you know I have I don't I don't tutor them anymore and they the tutoring um the tutoring company they don't do they don't offer online tutoring services so I really have no no more no contact with the kids and it's just over and I also work at my school in the gym and they shut the school down and closed the gym, so I don't do that anymore. And yeah, I mean they they moved all all in person classes to the online platform. And yeah, yeah, because the school I attend now, my high school, we are currently doing e work. We have been doing so since like March 16th, and I can understand how that can be hard. Yeah. For students still attending schools, even if it is college or high school. Yeah, it's really tough. It's not the same. Yeah. I never, I never took a online course at all, and it they had to change everything, like the whole syllabus. Like a lot of things changed. Um, a couple projects canceled, and you know, I actually used since the school is closed i didn't have access to the books that i would normally have access to that's in the library they're like reserved books so it's 
teachers had to change a lot and my school actually changed the grading policy to a pass fail policy and so you're like many students aren't even receiving uh you know letter grades a b c d f so that affects like a lot of a lot of students like gpa wise and Yeah. A lot of things changed. Yeah, um, Palia, yeah, um, the key word is just different and, you know, it's changed. And from my experience doing this COVID-19, it affect my work a lot. Um, I work in the restaurant industry, um, and also work in an office setting. Um, I work for a bank and, you know, with those two different job titles I have, you know, um, I have contact with so many customers and um, it's unfortunate that, you know, given this COVID-19, there's, um, you know, the six feet and we're like, we're really limiting our contacts, um, contacts to these customers. Um, so with the food industry, you know, we, we're limiting people to come in the restaurant and then for, for us to bank, um, our lobby is closed, so we luckily we have a drive-through um, because there's other banks. Um, it's in the neighborhood that doesn't have a drive-through and only have a lobby, and they're closed down temporarily. So it's it's unfortunate, um, but I'm still working th through all this. I I am a, an essential worker. It's just you know this this change is is different, and I think that's the key word between before I experience. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. Has it also affected the people around you? Like your relationships, your friendships, your parents, grandparents, things like that? Yes. Um I, I can I can take this one. Um yes, my my, my grandmother, uh, I love her so um she's still alive. <laughs> and she, and um, you know, she's the heart of the family. And we we, we we always have family time and you know whether it's family dinners or occasions or just just spending quality time with each other and given this COVID-19 um it's very it's restricted you know my my grandma my grandmother is in the elderly population which means she's prone to catch it so we try to stay at less contact as possible we do a lot of FaceTimes or phone calls to just kind of see how she's doing um, but that that's really a big change for me because like every other day I, I, I go visit my grandmother um, As far as my friendships, you know, we we still stronger than ever. Um, I feel like this is actually bringing us closer um, Because we we know we constantly call in and texting and checking on each other and just seeing how everyone is doing and holding up And if they need anything, you know, don't 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 be afraid to hesitate and as far as my co-workers um you know they there as well you know we we all you know striving for the same goal and just trying to protect ourselves when you say that there um yeah i mean it i think it affects us all the same you know we're we're stuck in a house and can't move how we want to move and um personally my my grandma um, <clears throat> she, you know, she wants to go outside. She wants to go for walks and stuff, but she's also scared. So yeah. she doesn't really want to go outside, but I think she, she should, but shouldn't because like you said, the, the, um, you know, they're at risk, older, older, um, people, mm -hmm. older people are at risk. And, um, and, um. Yeah, like my grandmother, she 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 is the glue of our family, and not being to go, not being able to go see her as much, I can see how that's affecting all of us, you know. Cause yeah, you know. um, excuse me. Also, um, Darnese also have a dog, and um, I'm not sure if you all know, but with the vets and everything they even taking precautions they're not doing a normal walk in yeah. with the dogs and everything they have a tester and you know the dog have to wait outside 
to be let in like one you by to, one. You have to make an appointment. Yeah, and that's really limited. So it just kind of yeah. it's just it affects a lot of us, the humans and even the animals. They they um they even shut down the dog parks. Yeah. As well as the you know the the parks, regular parks for the people. Yeah, it's really big. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry to hear that about your dog. What are your thoughts on COVID-19 by seeing like news articles, watching the news, statistics? What are your personal thoughts about this disease? My personal thoughts. <laughs> I kind of go back and forth in my head about it. Um, some Sometimes, you know, watching the media, I believe, is it real or is it fake? You know, um, but statistics doesn't lie you know um personal um hearing personal experiences you know that's that's not fake so i i believe my thoughts on that is you know this is real and this is something serious and i feel like everyone should take this with top priority and it's, it's just scary at the end of the day and that's pretty much it i just hope that soon it can be a cure to kind of put some settle to this 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 fear i have um <clears throat> i think that i think it's very real and it's affecting everybody and i think i also think that a lot of people are scared and they i don't think they should be scared why you why would you say that why is this some why is this something that you shouldn't fear like um i think i don't think people should be scared because i mean everybody gets sick and i mean it's it's between it's a fight between you and your body and you have to you got to take precautions to say, to stay safe but i don't think it should scare people from coming outside and i don't think that a quarantine is necessary because i don't think it's a quarantine is necessary because i feel like um i mean they mentioned that the the masks the regular masks don't protect us from the virus but the i think it's it's a certain mask that does but many 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 masks that the people have today like that you see everyday people and they it, it's not protecting them from anything so i mean you just got to stay safe and practice good good like hygiene wash your hands hand sanitizer wipe down things yeah just to just play just to go off of that um yeah Again, the thoughts about this COVID-19 is just scary. You know, one minute, like Darnie said, the mask, they say the mask is unsafe. Then now the mask is safe. And then now it's the different types of masks. And I'm I'm one guilty person that has a regular cotton mask, you know, something that's made out of a piece of clothing or something just to have, you know, a mask on because all the, you know, I guess the, the actual mask that they, they recommend that kind of prevents us it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's all out of stock or yeah. you know it, so you just gotta do what we gotta do to kind of survive scary it really is um, but you know the thoughts will forever you know continue until this all rolls over and go back to normal and be like look back and be like we, we conquered this but until then it's just going back and forth do you ever do you think there will ever be a back to normal like do you think stuff will ever be the same that it was before all of this happened no that, why, why, why would you say that it's just a no because um well i think we will always be required to wear a mask i think the grocery stores will continue to limit the number of people that's that can that's allowed in the store that's not just grocery stores banks just any any place i think is just going to be limited limited amount of people can be in at 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 one time um the mass for sure and i just think because they don't want to face this again because what what's the like okay this happened one person got it then 
is it's the virus the people affect is like growing exponentially so if one person gets it again that means this is just going to happen all over again so we have to keep certain precautions in place so it doesn't happen again yeah i agree yeah um i'm kind of on the fence um i believe that it can be back to normal but it will be a change mm -hmm. as Darren was saying um for instance i feel like i believe that the shield um shield guards that they mm -hmm. and you know they implemented now in grocery stores and you know hopefully future in certain banks that doesn't have a bulletproof window mm -hmm. um you know like i feel those can kind of separate and keep that kind of distance and security you know between the customer and you know the worker the employer mm -hmm. so i feel like that will be a big change now when it comes to bars and clubs and stuff and lounges i'm not sure how that will come into play but mm -hmm. as far as like grocery stores gas stations like certain you know places that actually have sh like shield guards and everything i feel like um if they don't have it they most definitely going to implement it yeah i can i can see why something like that would stay in place mm -hmm. And lastly, do you think that a cure will ever be found? Do you think something like this could ever be cured? Uh, again, the, the go to thoughts um, back and forth. Um, I, I, I do. Um, I, I see the, the country, us um, going back to normal. I see us finding a cure. Um, I see us working towards it now. Um, I know there's a lot of ideas, a lot of suggestions, you know, with the president and the government and the mayor on, you know, precautions that we should take to try to, you know, um, you know, just kind of low the risk of doing, you know, continue like spreading this coronavirus, you know, the stand in the house, keeping the six feet, um, you know, wearing a mask, doing a glove, you know, like all these little precautionary is, is can be, you know, um, you know, ways and methods that can help prevent it and that can be potentially be a cure and um i i, I believe so i believe a cure can be made just kind of just kind of got to find and keep striving for different ideas when you say dear niece i mean yeah a, a cure can um definitely be found but like the things like with viruses like the vaccines they have they're just putting they're just putting the virus in you like you your body has to fight it off like like the like the flu vaccine they're just putting the flu in you so your body can make antibodies to fight the virus so it's like i mean yeah they can take antibodies from a person who's beat the virus and make a cure but like you just if you if uh, um i mean it's like people who take the the flu vaccine some people who's like took the flu vaccine some of them died because their body can't fight it off and yeah i mean so a cure can be found like that that way but i don't think i think i feel a, there's not a cure for people who like like i'm trying to say is i'm trying to say like it's not like, like the, the people won't be cured like it's like uh like well, traumatizing like the this all this is traumatizing so mm -hmm. it's not a cure for that mm -hmm. cause it's just, it's just traumatizing but like yes a cure like a vaccine cure yes but yeah. not the people and because it's traumatizing like the people who's are who have to stay in the house that so although physically your body may recover from the virus mentally you will never forget that this happens yes yes, yes. Yes, I, I can see why you would say something like that. Yes. And, you know, I would just, I just would like to thank you both for giving me your input on this coronavirus because I know this is a touchy topic at this time. And, you know, people are often scared to talk about things like this because they don't want to go too in depth and things like that. But I would like to thank you both for giving me your time. I greatly appreciate it. And, um, yeah yeah thank I you for, oh you can go oh yeah um thank you Polia, so much for even considering us to talk to us about this tragedy that you know we all experience in nowadays and um i really hope that you know us speaking can shed some light and help and find a solution to this thank you yeah thank you for 
All right, well, that's that's all for the interview, and um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you, Anna, and thank you, Derenice. I very greatly appreciate you. All right. Yeah.